I got Roma Army on. Hello, Roma. Hello. I have some questions. Yeah. So I agree with what you're saying uh, about the whole um, like three month thing. I think that's probably centered behind it takes three months for somebody to actually show their true selves. Um, So I totally agree with that. And if somebody has an issue with that, then like go find somebody else. However, I have a question because you're uh, like you're a self-titled dating coach, right? Uh, I have an award in life coaching. Okay, cool. Okay. So who who issued the award? I'm just curious. Uh, local parliament member. A local parliament member? Yes. Where in Canada? Ontario, Waterloo Region. Okay, okay. I'm in Alberta, by the way. Okay, hi. Okay. Um, so I, I just, I, I guess my question, because like I've seen your, your content come up quite a bit, and um, I, I wasn't too surprised to see the terminology being used in this live Um, I guess I just want to uh, start it with a question. What do you think the difference is between like a coach and like a dictator? Like what kind of, sorry, let me rephrase. What Mm. kind of, um, what kind of thinking should be encouraged by a coach to their client or to whoever they're speaking to? Does that make sense? Right. So a, a coach is coaching people who come to them for the knowledge that they offer. Right. right. And a dictator uh, is saying, I come into your environment and tell you how it is. Okay, perfect. So, I mean, I guess my question is, because um, I noticed that there were like some guys that were just being kind of like rude and just like disrespectful of like the idea of consent. But then there were also some other ones that had some like genuine questions. And I noticed you were using the term like logic a lot you were saying things like well it's just logical and kind of making it seem like kind of making it seem like your opinion is like the opinion and I guess that's my my uh, issue with dating coaches is like my perception of a coach is supposed to be somebody that's supposed to like guide you give you advice and when you say things like it's just logical when you're giving your opinion, um, it actually comes off as like gaslighting and um, right. So like, let me uh, ask you this: I, I is you know what is I mean? it? Yeah. So are you saying it's it's illogical to want to know what you're getting into before you get into it? No, I said that it was because okay. um, that's not what you said. It was it's about the three months thing, and you said uh, I'm not going to give my body to somebody who uh like is a stranger or something like that and you're when i'm looking um something like that so it wasn't yeah when i'm looking for a long-term relationship right so you said that when looking for a long-term partner you are going to not give any part of your body physically to them and that is just logical correct uh so when i'm looking for a long-term partner If I want to use the knowledge and insight method and follow the no kissing for three months dating rule, it's no kissing, no sex, no sleepovers, no exclusivity. Physical affection is something that's going to happen organically. The way it comes about is if the more I get to know you, the more I like you. If the more I like you, the more fondness, warm and fuzzy I feel. If the more warm and fuzzy I feel, the more affectionate I feel, then I start showing affection. Right. So that. To me, that kind of tells me that you, your love language is like more um, personal intimacy rather than physical. I'm physical affection all the way, all day, every day. Okay, so you just believe, you you just believe that you should hold out on physical affection, like you yourself or other people. I'm holding out. I'm not holding back. Right. The the organic progression of affection is the more I get to know you, the more I like you, the more I like you, the more affection I feel, the more affection I feel, the more affection I show. I'm not withholding anything. I'm just not subscribing to kissing and having sex just to get to know somebody. Okay, no, and I totally get that. My question is, my issue was your terminology um, with using the word logical behind it. When somebody challenged that idea, you said, well, because it's logical, is that correct? It's logical to want to know what you're getting into, to want. 
it's because there are people who are saying that's insane, that's crazy. And I say it's not. It's logical to want to know what you're getting into before you get into it. So I want to know whether or not you're abusive or lazy or selfish before I kiss and have sex with you when I'm picking somebody for the next 50, 60, 70 years. Right. So what about somebody who maybe um, takes their time with more of the like emotional stuff, but sex isn't like super emotional to them? Would you say that they're illogical? That they're not emotional about sex? No. Okay. So maybe my point's not coming across very okay. well here. So my, my issue was I pop in and it says debate. Okay. Mm -hmm. So usually a debate is like, uh, you know, personal opinion is kind of like offset a little bit. And it's about like ideologies. It's, it's right? opposite sides of a statement. No, I'm totally right? aware. Yes. That's what I mean. Yeah. So, but, but so, the thing is, is that like, when people are trying to debate you, I notice you saying things like, uh, sorry, I'm noticing you backing up your arguments with statements like it's logical. And I'm just wondering as a dating coach or as a coach and someone who's won an award, do you feel like maybe that's a little bit um, gaslighty and maybe that tells somebody who doesn't agree with that or the exact way that you've structured it? Do you think that that may make people feel like they're illogical? Because uh, that's so how I felt personally so, yeah, as like so a woman so watching you. Yeah. Uh, so the word debate, right? Absolutely. Come, come, come and have a conversation with me. And if you want to debate, my side is it is logical to want to know what you're getting into before you get into it. So if you if you're debating me, then your side is it is illogical to want to know what you're getting into before you get into it. Because my side here is it's logical to want to know who someone is when you're looking to start a long-term relationship. I mean, fair enough. I guess my issue is with the term uh, logical, because obviously the inverse of that is uh, illogical. And it's really easy to uh, win an argument when you've prefixed your argument as you are the logical one. Do you understand what I'm saying? So just as a viewer, uh, like, I don't know, you kind of lost me a little bit. Um, so I don't know if like, I don't know, just a little bit of insight. I don't really see it as much of a debate. I kind of see it as more of like, yeah, especially considering you've been married for 17 years. So I feel no, like yeah, maybe 17. you should structure it differently, right? Yeah, together 17. Maybe it's just me. Can the chat January, let me know? It's running on a in January. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of people who come in here and go, that's crazy, right? That's, right. that's illogical. That's crazy. No kissing for three months. That's crazy. So I say, go ahead and argue your point. Why is it crazy? Okay, fair enough. I guess my I guess my thing with debating a topic like that is um, like where's where's the medium? You know what I mean? Because the debate is so like you know there's this side and there's this side, and that's why I asked the question. What what about people who are very cautious, you know, they look for the red flags, such as, you know, raising voices, slamming things, throwing things, but their physical being really just isn't that, like, they're just really not that conservative with it. Do you feel like that's logical or illogical? I have, I have no, uh, so people will come here and they'll say, you know, what do you think about polyamory? What do you think about open relationships? What do you think about people who kiss and have sex right away? And, you know, people who kiss and have sex right away and it work, that's the luck and intuition. There's, there's, there's more than one way to get into a relationship. So there's the luck mm -hmm. and intuition way, which is kissing, having sex, and then it works out or it doesn't. Right. Um, and then mm -hmm. the other way is getting the knowledge and insight first. And so one way is kissing, having sex, and getting the data, and hopefully it works. And the other way is getting the data first, not relying on hope or luck or intuition, and just making an educated choice about who they're choosing. Okay, so, um, so I would guess that maybe you're somebody who is like more... Um, probably like more, more conservative, right? So like, for example, for me, I was a stripper for 20 years. I went to swingers. I brought both my husbands to swingers clubs. Okay, good. Good job. 
Good for you. Wow, damn, good for you. Uh, <laughs> no, I guess, um, like, you're, here's the thing, right? If you are basing the, if you're using sex as, like, the, not using, usually that's used in, like, a negative condemnation. That's not what I mean here. But if yeah. the idea of sex, if, if putting sex in the relationship before you figured out if they're a good person or not, if that is, like, your... If that's the thing that's your decider, do you feel like sex is really all that important in a relationship? Like, do you, it's, it's how much of an importance that. do you place on it? Mm -mm. It's, it's not about that. It's, uh, it's about not confusing myself, right? So touch creates oxytocin. Movement in the birth canal creates a ton of oxytocin. So if we just hold hands and hug and cuddle, um, we're not creating as much oxytocin as if we were kissing and having sex. And kissing creates a chemical reaction, right? Like touches oxytocin, reward is dopamine, happiness is serotonin. Kissing also creates a chemical reaction that's an aphrodisiac amphetamine and antidepressant, which is why kissing comes right before sex. Like we lubricate it with the kissing, basically, and the chemicals that are mm -hmm. released in kissing. So when I'm looking for a long-term partner, if I'm like, when I'm in a hookup stage here today, gone tomorrow, I'm not staying long enough to create so much consistently over and over and start bonding with that person here today, gone tomorrow. I just had some fun and then off he goes. But when I'm looking for a long-term partner and I kiss and have sex, I develop emotions before I figure out who they are. And I confuse myself because if I develop emotions and it turns out he's lying, cheating, lazy, unmotivated, irresponsible, actually doesn't want a relationship, but lied about that, right? But I developed emotions for that person and I, it takes me longer to let go. So I stayed too long with the wrong person. I made a mistake and it cost me. So do you think that you could still make that same mistake by like staying for, cause here's the thing, right? Uh, I dated somebody one time for uh, eight months and uh, then found out that he wanted to be like Polly. So even if I hadn't slept with him, I still would have, you know, there was more red flags or whatever, but I, those red flags still would have come about, right? Because people slowly, the, the issue that I take up with the, with the sex being the like kind of deciding factor is that people can take however, but, it, but it's got to be. Because it's not, it's not a deciding no factor. It's not a touch, factor. Pardon me. It's, okay, it's physical the, touch then. I, it's, it's, I, I use my logic to decide and then I mm -hmm. committed to the person and then we, we do the rest of it. Do you, do you agree with the philosophy that logic is merely um, just humans reacting based off of instinct? It's like emotionally charged instinct. So I, I took time to observe them. And I picked somebody who showed that they were financially responsible, that they had work ethic, that they weren't trying to control me, um, that they weren't seeking the validation of other people. And, and so what I did is I compiled an understanding of who I wanted for a relationship before I, before I went out and chose. I compiled that understanding and then I went out and I sought that person out. And when I found them, I selected them. Okay. I think what's I, I think what's throwing me off a little bit here is the fact that like you're you've been married for a very long time, but throughout the whole time of watching the live, instead of using like, because um, when we're debating a topic like this, especially something that like doesn't necessarily apply to you anymore, because you've already found your partner, you've already found your one, um, you're using a lot of like, I statements, me, I, my yeah. logic, and yeah. what's throwing me off is like, you can't really debate people about like their own emotions and how they feel. So I think, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So I, I, I use think I and me's because I'm actually not speaking okay. for myself when I teach this. I use, I say, I'm using a no kissing for three months demo because I want to make sure I choose the right person. <clears throat> I'm actually not speaking for myself. I'm speaking for the people who are watching who want to use this rule and want to understand how to communicate it when they're talking to other people. Okay. Okay. No, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. you being so, so kind. And so, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're, you're really, um, like eloquent. You're very, 
You're very uh, classy. You're very classy. You're very kind. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was a great conversation. Anytime, lovely. Thank you. See you. Have a good night.